Okay, Tara, that was that was great. Uh, that was great. That's that's a great message about it's not the passengers, it's the cars. Uh, point number two: sugar is toxic. Fructose is alcohol without the buzz. Those are the words of uh, a man who's very popular out here on the West Coast, Dr. Robert Lustig, uh, the pediatric uh, endocrinologist from UCSF, and he has a website. Uh, uh, the bitter truth that we recommend our patients look at, uh, especially, especially if the if the if the family has a child that's overweight. Uh, Dr. Lustig's message becomes real important, and I know this is uh, an area you're interested in. So um, he talks about it's it's the choice: it's beer belly or sugar belly. Uh, uh, sugar and high fructose corn syrup needed to be the first things to go. Both carbs and alcohol drive the triglycerides up. And mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about this point? That's Well, it's an excellent point, and it's something that I think is really misunderstood. I mean, when you tell a patient they have a cholesterol problem and you don't specify that there's a triglyceride issue, they sometimes walk away thinking what I need to do is get the fat out of my diet, when really, especially if the triglycerides are the issue, what's the building block for triglyceride? I mean, it's three fatty acids and a glycerol, a sugar. So obviously, as you consume more sugar, you're going to be driving those triglycerides up. And what does that do? That ultimately ends up leading to the small, dense LDL that we were just talking about earlier with the marbles. So clearly, the building block for these triglycerides for this really atherogenic state that ultimately leads to insulin resistance and uh, this whole cascade of events that really um, produces the, the atherogenic state that ultimately leads to heart attack and stroke is, is built in part by the sugar we consume. Obviously, there's genetics that play a role here, but certainly uh, our behaviors, our lifestyle certainly contribute to that. And in our, in our practice, more often than not, our advice to people is you need to get the sugar out of your diet if you really want to reduce your risk, especially if you want to modify the dyslipidemia that we see in a, in a setting of high triglycerides without question. Makes sense. I can't tell you how hard it was to get this. This is a Coke from 1984. Mm -hmm. 1984, that was the year the government gave us, many of us think, some pretty bad advice. Mm -hmm. That was the serving size in 1984. Oh, yes. And, and this uh, is the serving size for a Coke mm -hmm. today. This is a 20 ounce Coke, and in the bottom of this Coke, there's no Coke, obviously, but that's 65 grams of sugar. Mm -hmm. And this is what our children are drinking. Yeah. My first question to parents and to children when I see them, when we're sitting there and trying to have a real conversation about our life, it's what do you drink? I ask kids, what do you drink? And so often what they're drinking, and sometimes it's a sports drink that they think is something healthy that is marketed in a healthy way and all it is is a bucket of sugar. And that's what they're consuming. The first thing that we try to do is get people to drink calorie-free beverages if you really want to start to make a difference in their diet, even if they don't eliminate anything else, if they just get the sugar out of the fluids they're drinking. It's key. Because it's true, and this, is, and this isn't even a big gulp. If you go to Wisconsin, you can get a big gulp. That's like 64 <laughs> ounces. I'm sure it's a lot more sugar than this. And, you know, it's, it's really part of the problem um, that we, we don't understand what this kind of food and this kind of processed stuff does to our bodies and to our our abdomens uh, in particular. So we carried around with us. <laughs>